ओके नाउ लेट एस ट्राई टू एनालाइज दी बिहेवियर बाय सॉल्विंग द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन फॉर द चार्ज पार्टिकल इन अ क्वाड्रोपोल फील्ड इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन एंड देन वी विल ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट दी ट्रांसफर मैट्रिक्स फॉर अ क्वाड्रोपोल सो द फोर्स ऑन अ चार्ज पार्टिकल इज गिवन बाय क्यू ई प्लस वी क्रॉस बी इन द एक्स मोशन नाउ फॉर दिस क्वाड्रोपोल द it is focusing it is a focusing quadrupole in the x direction so in the x plane the equation of motion is fx is equal to m d 2 x by dt square is equal to q e x so we are writing just the x component plus q v y b z minus v z b y okay now in a quadrupole there is no electric field so there is only magnetic field here there is no electric field and the magnetic field is also only transverse there is no magnetic field in the z direction we have only bx and by so we can write ex is equal to 0 and bz is equal to 0 so we put ex is equal to 0 and also bz is equal to 0 so we get this equation of motion we get fx is equal to minus qvz by and by is what g into x where g is the magnetic field gradient now let us change the coordinates from z to t we know that z is equal to vz into t so dz is equal to vz into dt again taking the second derivative so we will get d2x and simplifying we will get d2x by dt square is equal to vz square d2x by dz square this we can substitute in this equation here and we will get the uh, the differential equation now in terms of z instead of t so this is the equation that we get now we can put q g by m v z is equal to k x some constant k x because for a given beam and for a for a given charge particle and for a given quadrupole these are all constants the uh, q is the charge which is constant m is the mass vz is the velocity so it's moving with a constant velocity there is no acceleration in the quadrupole g is the gradient of the quadrupole so we get d2x by dz square plus kx into x is equal to 0 this is the equation of a simple harmonic oscillator and the solution of this equation is x is equal to a cos under root kx z plus b sin under root kx z we can differentiate this with respect to z and we get this so now if you see the solution of uh, the equation of motion is sinusoidal so that we get that if the charge particle is entering inside a quadrupole the motion inside is sinusoidal okay now if we terminate the quadrupole at a very small distance or in other words the length of the quadrupole is very small okay then uh, we can uh, determine the values of so it, it will it need not be fully oscillatory you can terminate it here you can have a short quadrupole and then you can determine the values of the uh, constants a and b from here so let's see how it can be done so let's say now this is the quadrupole and the coordinates of the particle at the entrance of the quadrupole is x1 x1 prime and as it exits the quadrupole it is x2 x2 prime so we consider a quadrupole of length l the charge particle enters the quadrupole at z is equal to 0 with initial coordinates x1 and x1 prime at the exit of the quadrupole the coordinates are x2 and x2 prime x is the position coordinate and x prime is the derivative with respect to z which is also called the divergence of the particle with respect to the z axis so the boundary conditions at the entry and exit are at z is equal to 0 x is equal to x1 and x prime is equal to x1 prime similarly at z is equal to l x is equal to x2 and x prime is equal to x2 prime so we can substitute this in the solution so the solution of the equation was in terms of x and x prime so applying the first boundary condition at z is equal to 0 x is equal to x1 and x prime is equal to x1 prime so we put this equal to 0 so this will go to 0 here and we will get 
x1 so this is equal to 1 so we get x1 is equal to a and putting in this equation this will go to 0 we will get x1 prime is equal to b under root kx from here we can find out the values of a and b a is equal to x1 and b is equal to x1 prime by under root kx so then we can substitute the values of a and b in these equations and this is what we get we get uh, these two equations like this now let us apply the second boundary condition so at z is equal to l x is equal to x2 and x prime is equal to x2 prime so let us put this so at z is equal to l x is equal to x2 and x2 is uh, and x prime is equal to x2 prime so this is the equation that we get now this equation can be written in matrix form again these two equations can be written like this so we have x2 x2 prime in terms of x1 and x1 prime so we get a matrix like this so these are the initial coordinates the coordinates at the beginning of the quadrupole and this is the final coordinates that is the coordinates at the end of the quadrupole and this is now the transfer matrix of the quadrupole so we can write this as x2 is equal to mqx now mqx is the transfer matrix of the focusing quadrupole times x1 so x1 is x1 x1 prime and x2 is x2 x2 prime and this is the transfer matrix of the focusing quadrupole now notice here this depends only on the uh, parameters kx and l and kx depends upon what it depends only upon the beam parameters and the uh, quadruple parameters so kx if you remember is q g by m v z so q is the charge of the uh, charge of the charge particle m is the mass this is the velocity and g is the gradient of the quadrupole so this depends upon only kx and l which is again the length of the quadrupole so if you know about the parameters of the beam and the quadrupole and you know the initial coordinates so you can find out the final coordinates of that charge particle at the end of the quadrupole now similarly you can find out the uh, motion of the single particle in the quadrupole field in the y direction so that same quadrupole in the y direction it is a defocusing quadrupole so here is the charge particle it is coming here it gets defocused and uh, then it moves out so here we see that uh, the initial coordinates are y1 y1 prime and the final coordinates are y2 y2 prime so you can write the equation of motion in y so you get an equation like this again substituting qg by mvz is equal to ky in this equation so this equation will have solutions in the form of sine hyperbolic and cos hyperbolic uh, terms and then we can apply the boundary conditions at z is equal to 0 y is equal to y1 and y prime is equal to y1 prime z is equal to l y is equal to y2 and y prime is equal to y2 prime so substituting these we can find out the transfer matrix of the defocusing quadrupole so here a transfer matrix has terms in the form of cos hyperbolic functions and again it depends upon ky and l so just the parameters of the beam and the parameters of the quadrupole and so again if you know the initial coordinates you know uh, the about the uh, beam and the quadrupole you can find out the final coordinates so this transfer matrix method is very useful in finding out the final coordinates of a particle if you know the initial coordinates similarly just like a magnetic quadrupole we can also have an electric quadrupole so since it's an electric quadrupole there will be electric field so we will have potential instead of uh, instead of um, a magnet we will have now potential supplied so this is uh, these opposite uh, poles are at positive potential and these uh, opposite poles are at negative potential so you can draw the electric field lines and again you can resolve them in all the four quadrants so you see that uh, for the with the electric field the force uh, is in the same direction as the applied electric field so this type of electric quadrupole will focus in the y direction and defocus in the uh, x direction if you reverse the polarities 
that means you make this and this as positive and you make this and this as negative then it will become reverse okay and again you can use a combination of two electric quadrupoles and focus in both directions so an electric quadrupole has four poles arranged symmetrically in the xy plane so this is x and this is y the boom, the beam is moving in the z direction with velocity vz so as before you have the beam here moving in the z direction out of your screens so here direction of the force is same as the direction of the electric field this quadrupole will focus in y direction and defocus in x direction and here now notice that the force due to the electric field is independent of the velocity it does not depend upon the velocity unlike the force due to the magnetic field so thus we have calculated the transfer matrix for a focusing quadrupole for a defocusing quadrupole and for a drift space in this way we can calculate the transfer matrix of any element in a uh, beam line or even in an accelerator so every component let's say we have a bending magnet or let's say even an accelerating gap all these components will have a, a transfer matrix so we have calculated the transfer matrix of uh, some simple elements so others will also have a transfer matrix and by using uh, uh, if you know the transfer matrix and the initial coordinates of the charged particle at the beginning of that element you can find out the final coordinates at the end of that element now let's uh, calculate the focal length of the quadrupole in x so since it's a uh, focusing quadrupole so it's it acts like a lens so it will have a certain focal length okay now in the x direction the quadrupole focuses so the charged particle enters the quadrupole this charged particle is entering the quadrupole of length l at a point a so it's entering here at a point a which is and it is parallel to the uh, z axis so this is the z axis it is parallel to the z axis then it gets focused in the quadrupole so it gets focused because it's a focusing quadrupole and exits the quadrupole at point p then there is a drift space of length l after the quadrupole so in this drift space after the quadrupole the beam gets focused at a point s uh, at a point c which is at a distance s from the quadrupole okay so even in a ray of light if you see you have a you have a converging lens in order to calculate the focal length you bring the ray of light parallel to it and then you calculate after what distance from the quadrupole it gets focused so similarly we have the charged particle coming parallel to the z axis it's getting focused in the quadrupole and finally at a distance s after the quadrupole it gets focused or in other words it comes to the axis and we want to calculate what is this distance s so magnetic quadrupole behaves like a convex lens in the x direction okay now you can calculate the coordinates x3 x3 prime in terms of x2 and x2 prime so if you know the length of the drift space so x3 x3 prime is simply the transfer matrix of the drift into x2 x2 prime and x2 x2 prime is simply mqx that means the uh, transfer matrix of the focusing quadrupole into x1 x1 prime so instead of uh, x2 x2 prime this is equal to this i have just equated this here okay so now writing you know the transfer matrix for the drift space of length uh, s and you know the transfer matrix for a focusing quadrupole so you can simply write this like this and now you can multi do the matrix multiplication and this is the resultant matrix here so now by definition of focal length a parallel beam comes to focus at the focal point at the point c here okay this distance is f so for a parallel beam now this initial beam is parallel so that means the angle that it is making with the z axis should be zero or in other words x1 prime should be equal to zero okay also since this beam is getting or this charged particle is getting focused at point c here the displacement of this point from the axis should be zero in other words x3 is equal to zero
So now you can apply these two conditions here. You can put in x1 prime equal to 0 and x3 is equal to 0. So you have this uh, x3 is equal to this. So it is in terms of x1 and x1 prime and x3 prime is again in terms of x1 and x1 prime. So you can write these equations from the matrix equation for a parallel beam x1 prime is equal to 0 and at the focus x3 is equal to 0. So you put x3 is equal to 0 here and x1 prime is equal to 0 here. So you get this expression. So this is equal to 0 and from here you can calculate the value of s and it comes out to be cos under root kxl divided by under root kx sin under root kx into l or in other words it is cot of under root kxl divided by under root kx so this is the focal length of a focusing quadrupole so again it is in terms of the it depends upon the beam velocity, the beam mass and depends upon the parameters of the quadrupole. We can also calculate the focal length of the quadrupole in Y. This quadrupole is defocusing in Y. So in, in the Y direction, the quadrupole defocuses. The charge particle enters the quadrupole of length L at point A parallel to the uh, z axis. So again you have to take a parallel beam. So it enters here parallel to the z axis. It gets defocused inside the quadrupole and exits at point B. The focal length is the virtual distance s behind the quadrupole where the particle appears to get focused. So this is the distance s behind the quadrupole where it appears to be focused. Again this is uh, analogous to ray optics for a defocusing uh, lens. So magnetic quadrupole behaves like a uh, concave lens in the y direction. So you can calculate the focal length here s comes out to be uh, minus cot hyperbolic under root ky l by under root ky. Okay. So you can in this way you can find out the focal length of a given quadrupole in the x and y direction. Now let us see the thin lens approximation for the quadrupoles. In the, the thin lens approximation applies when the length of the quadrupole is, is much smaller than the focal length of the quadrupole. So let's say you have a quadrupole, let me represent it by a lens. This length is very very small as compared to this focal length. Okay, So this length of the quadrupole is very small as compared to the focal length. So length is small. The length of the quadrupole then approaches 0 while holding the focal length constant. So that means L tends to 0 whereas Kx into L is not equal to 0. So the focal length uh, 1 by the focal length is given by this expression. You have under root Kx tan under root Kx into L. This can be written. So you uh, multiply and divide by under root Kx L here. Okay. So this term will tend towards 1 and you are left with this under root kx under root kx multiplied to give uh, kx into l. So the focal length is then given as focal length is 1 upon kx l. So this is the thin lens focal length of the quadrupole. So wherever you have quadrupoles that are very small in size as compared to the focal length of that quadrupole, you can use the thin lens approximation. It's a simpler formula to calculate the focal length. So this is the focal length. You can also calculate the transfer matrix using the uh, thin lens approximation. So here negative sign is for the focusing lens and positive sign is for the defocusing lens. So this is the uh, transfer matrix for a thin lens approximation of the quadrupole, both the focusing and the defocusing. Now in the thin lens approximation, as the particle travels through the lens, the position coordinate of the particle remains fixed, but the divergence changes. So since the quadrupole is very thin and we have assumed that the length is zero, so the position at the beginning and the end remains the same okay and uh, what changes is only the divergence of the particle so if it's a focusing lens the divergence reduces and if it's a defocusing lens the divergence increases so uh, this is the so this is the location of the thin lens thin quadrupole lens uh, 
at the uh, uh, in this uh, axis so here the length is zero so this is the charged particle earlier it uh, had a divergence which was like this the thin focusing lens has now changed the divergence to this value okay similarly for the defocusing lens this was the charged particle this is the thin lens the thin defocusing lens this is the initial um, divergence of the particle and now when it comes out of the lens of zero length the divergence has increased it is in the positive direction so let's see the behavior so it, it is easier to visualize uh, the behavior of the particle in real space but uh, the trace space gives us more information so let's see the behavior of single particle motion in real and trace space so for a drift space so this is x and z so in so this is the initial position of the particle and it is moving with a fixed divergence so here x prime does not change and it is moving from here to here so it's a it's a diverging particle so you can see here at this location let's say this position was x1 and here the position is x2 okay the at this at both the locations the divergence is the same so let's see in trace space trace space is simply xx prime so in xx prime this is the original position of the particle so so it had a so this corresponds to x1 and then finally it moves here this corresponds to x2 so the position of the particle has changed from x1 to x2 but if you see the x prime it remains the same in going from the first location to the second location the divergence has not changed similarly for a quadrupole let's say i have a quadrupole and uh, the initial position is here and then the the charged particle goes through the quadrupole and gets focused in this case if you see here this is x1 and this is x2 x2 is slightly more than x1 okay so as it is exiting from the quadrupole the x2 is slightly more than x1 so here the divergence has also changed it was uh, it was diverging beam and now uh, it has become a converging so this is the location here and this is the location here so this corresponds to x1 and this corresponds to x2 so x2 is slightly greater than x1 and the divergence has same changed sign because here it was a diverging beam and here it is now a converging beam so it has come from the positive axis to the negative axis now for a thin lens so thin lens is the length of uh, the length of the lens is zero so this is in real space so this is a focusing lens the slope decreases so initially the slope is like this and then uh, as it passes through the length uh, lens of length uh, zero the angle decreases so here the position remains same because the length of the quadrupole lens is zero so you can see here x1 and x2 are the same the this is at the same location only the angle has changed from positive to negative similarly defocusing lens here the slope increases so initially it was like a converging uh, uh, particle or a converging beam and then after passing through this thin defocusing lens it has become a diverging particle so the again the position is the same this is x1 and the angle has changed from negative to positive so in this way you can visualize the behavior of a single charged particle in trace space okay let's see how matrix formalism is uh, useful in uh, solving uh, problems or, or finding out the coordinates of the particles for a large system now let's say we have a large system where we have a quadrupole uh, where we have a quadrupole magnet so let's say this is a focusing quadrupole magnet followed by a drift space so there is no field in this drift space so these drift space are often utilized for putting in vacuum pumps or some diagnostics or uh, just for putting the flanges between two elements so there is a drift space so first we have a focusing quadrupole followed by a drift space then there is another quadrupole which is a defocusing quadrupole again a drift space then there is a bending magnet here 
again followed by a quarter pole magnet focusing quarter pole magnet a drift space between the next two uh, quarter poles again a defocusing quarter pole and drift okay now i want to find out the coordinates of the particle at this location i know the coordinates of the particle at this location so let's say the coordinates here are x1 and here it is x9 so i want to find out the uh, coordinates x9 okay and i know the transfer matrix of the focusing quarter pole the drift the defocusing quarter pole and the bending magnet and i also know the parameters of the beam so let's see how we can find it out so this is the initial location of the particle okay and uh, this is how it will travel so this is a focusing quadrupole it is focusing it then there is a drift space it moves with the same uh, angle or divergence there is a defocusing quadrupole which defocuses the beam then another uh, drift space then a bending magnet and so on now i want to find out x9 and x0 i know so x9 i can if i uh, if i know x8 i can find out the and i know the uh, transfer matrix of this drift i can find out x9 okay so x9 is simply equal to the transfer matrix of the drift into x8 and x8 is this point i can write it in terms of x7 so x8 is simply transfer matrix of the uh defocusing quadrupole into x7 and uh, x so the and uh, and so on so this can be found out so on so here uh, x9 x9 prime can be if you multiply all these transfer matrices you can find out if you know the initial coordinates you can find out the final coordinates at the end of this large system so thus we see that the matrix formalism is very useful uh in knowing the final coordinates of a particle uh, in a huge large complex system so if we know the initial coordinates of the particle and the transfer matrices of the elements in between we can find out the final coordinates of the particle by matrix multiplication method so let us summarize what we have learned today the beam tends to diverge in the direction transverse to the direction of motion due to various reasons so it could be due to the inherent uh, divergence of the beam it could be due to the rf uh, uh, rf fields which cause defocusing it could also be due to space charge forces so beam can be focused in transverse direction using magnetic or electric quadrupole so we saw how a magnetic quadrupole focuses we saw how an electric quadrupole focuses a quadrupole focuses in one direction and defocuses in the other direction so this is true for both quadrupoles both type of quadrupoles a magnetic quadrupole or an electric quadrupole a combination of two quadrupoles of opposite polarities can be used to focus the beam in both the transverse directions so if you use two quadrupoles with opposite polarities then the net result will be focusing in both the directions solenoids focus the beam in both transverse directions so if you use a solenoid you can use you can focus with a single solenoid it will focus in both x and y direction the matrix It multiplication method the matrix multiplication method using transfer matrices of the various elements can be used to find the final coordinates at the end of the elements if we know the initial coordinates of the particles and the elements of the transfer matrix In the next lecture we will learn more about transverse dynamics of beams so today we learned about single particle behavior so in the next lecture we will see how the beam envelope as a whole uh, behaves